I sense that Mr. Peru is about to surprise us too. I believed in him. I followed him to the best of my ability. I championed his ideas, defended his decisions, and then, without even realizing it, I became lost. Now that I've told you everything, you want to take my place, do you? No. I am Emily. You are wasting your time. Louis knows very well how to tell us apart. Someone had the bang coming from the Duchess's room, and she isn't answering. Louis, you really must learn to conceal your weaknesses better. If you don't want your foes to use them against you. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. It is the natural order of things, Monsieur de Richet. There have always been men who govern other men. That is simply the way it is. History forgets them with a disconcerting facility. No one speaks about them, and yet they whisper in the ears of kings and presidents. But where are we? I don't know, but we better not hang around. Be careful, Mother. As if me saying that will make any difference. Knowing Mortimer, I wouldn't be surprised if he rigged his crypt with traps. So you think the door is not enough? Do you want to wager your other hand? You've got a point there. We have to find that weapon. What do you know about the Holy Lance, Louis? The what? The Lance of Longinus the Centurion. Now that you mention it, I did catch Von Volner in the middle of an altercation with Piaggi. What? Von Volner blamed his eminence for having supplied Mortimer with all the lances in the Vatican's possession. If Mortimer has all of them in his possession, it's not going to help us. Seriously? You don't really believe that fable, do you? Every fable is founded on true events. I'm not saying that everything adds up, but imagine if it really did exist. Very well. Now what? Well, now you know what you need to find. Pardon? I have to get to the wharf to prepare our departure. Let's get off this cursed island as quickly as we can. We shall come back when we are ready and armed. But hang on. Louis, let's first get to safety. We shall come back when we have the upper hand. Fear not. You take care of getting the lance. It's imperative. I'll take care of preparing our departure. Hang on. At least tell me everything you know about this lance. But I have never seen it. There's nothing else I can say, Louis. Well, you can always go snooping around Mortimer's study. I remember seeing paintings of Longinus there. Hang on a second. What's the matter? Why did you shoot Emily's sister? Do you really think now is the right time for this? I want to know, Mother. Why did you betray her? Listen, Louis. I don't think you've really understood my interest in the al -Azif. It's not just simple curiosity about some old relic. You tried to kill her. And I had no choice for crying out loud. It must not fall into the hands of the demons, or we are all doomed, don't you see? Listen, I don't know exactly what it contains, but I prefer to be one step ahead. If they want it, there must be a reason. And even if I don't know what it is, I want to stop them for safety's sake, no matter what. Nothing will stop you if I understand correctly. Not Enough, even... Louis. If you could see the extent of their power as I do, then you would understand what I'm saying. All right, we'll do it your way. One more thing. If they find you in possession of the lance, they won't let you get away with it. Choose only one and hide it under your jacket so you don't get caught with it. Then run and meet me on the wharf. And if I get caught? If they catch you in possession of the lance, we're all doomed. Do you understand? Perfectly. Good. And go talk to Piaget. He's the one who probably knows the most about this.
Your Eminence, would you have a moment to spare? Not now, Louis. Please, leave me alone. I beg your pardon? I want to be alone. Very well. I, I'm only searching for information about the Lance of Longinus, the soldier. If you could- you are not listening to me. You are playing with fire. I heard you speak to Mr. Von Volner about it, and I was wondering if you could tell me something about it. That was a private conversation. How could I have known that he was listening to us? Hmm. I see what you mean. Louis, don't push it. Leave while you still can. Your Eminence, are you all right? Your Eminence, are you with me? Can you turn around, please? What do you want to know about the Holy Lands, Louis? Your Eminence, turn around. This is the weapon used by a Roman centurion on the very day Christ was nailed to the cross. Look at me. Longinus thrust his lance in the right side of Jesus. Please. As you wish. His nose is bleeding. So, you are looking for the Holy Lance of Longinus, are you? Exactly. Frank and direct. I like that. Thank you for not trying to be sly. You are looking for the Lance. You should know, you are not the only one. Lord Mortimer has spent a good part of his life and his fortune trying to find it. Never will he let you have it. But tell me, before going any further, have you spoken to anyone else about this? Yes, my mother knows about it. Of course, Sarah. Who else? No one else. What are you going to use the lance for, exactly? I need it. Why? You won't understand. <sighs> Try me, Louis. I need to protect myself with it. Louis, I thank you for your sincerity. I shall answer you about Longinus. You deserve to be told. His spearheaded lance did indeed pierce the side of the Messiah. His blood gushed out, covering the head of the lance. It was covered in the blood of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Your Eminence. You are welcome. Be careful, Louis. You are on a perilous path. Don't follow Sarah's demons, my boy. Don't delve too deeply into her delusions, or you won't be able to come back. The demons that she is frantically trying to drive away are in her own mind. Take good care of yourself. God keep you.
Saint Longinus. Let's take a closer look at his lance. It is shaped like a leaf, but like the real lance, maybe. How can I be sure? No, this is too easy. Mortimer's trying to throw me off the track again. It seems too visible to be true. Impossible not to see the statue on first glance, given its size. And Mortimer has no interest in making the shape of the true lance so easy to see. Hey, looks like there's a symbol engraved on the tip. Yes, a fish. The Christian fish, no doubt. It can't be a coincidence. It, it must have been done on purpose. Huh. Good thing I took a closer look. I think this statue does represent Longinus, armed with the lance that wounded Jesus. The Holy Lance. How can I find out if this is an exact representation? There's no way of being certain of it. Adoration of the Shepherds with Saints Longinus and John, Giulio Romano, 1534. Longinus is holding the Holy Lance in his left hand, and I'll bet he's holding the sponge soaked in holy blood in the other hand. Yes! Here we can see that the Holy Lance is represented in the shape of a spear. I'd better make sure I check this twice. It's, it's a work that dates from the Renaissance. There's nothing to say that it's not based on erroneous elements. But I believe what I read in the letter from Milan addressed to Mortimer. There's every reason to believe that this painting has been modified according to his guidelines to represent the true shape of the Holy Lance, a spear shape. This work is an order from Lord Mortimer. All the details have been conceived with a specific goal in mind. Upon closer examination, you can see that even the style clashes with that of most of the other works in the manor. No, if Mortimer has taken special care as the conception and the exhibition of this painting in his study, in the same way as for the nightmare painting, it must be of some significance. And that is indeed the true shape of the Holy Lance, a spear shape. There's only one way of being sure. I'll have to find other clues that will confirm this information. Seems like he isn't here. The signs of obscurantism. What a mess. Looks like Volnor was interrupted. Looks a lot like straw. And he's drawn something in a hurry on this sheet. I get the feeling that I've seen that somewhere before. I've seen occult inscriptions like this before. They're not very common. As a matter of fact, I've only seen them once before, around the Lock of Al-Azif. Straw on his desk. 
as if to... as if to protect something fragile. Yes, someone must have packed something away here. Look, a, a blotter. And apparently it's been used recently. I wonder what Volner was going to write. It's smudged. It's not all legible. I can make out the signature though and leave as Azif planned le <sighs> It's illegible. Let's see if I can find a solution in Volner's things here. Given his interest in alchemy, I wouldn't be surprised if I found something that revealed what's written somewhere in his room. Just close. Let's see. A simple toiletry case? Never mind. A chemistry set. That's not surprising coming from Von Wolner. find something to help reveal the traces of ink on the blotter. Think, Louis. I know for sure that lime water neutralizes chemical actions, but doesn't work on ink. I must find something else. find some ammonium sulfide if I want to make the text appear by capillary action. Perfect. Here's some. Yes, it worked. Now I can see it. Sir Gregory, I'll leave al -Azif at the landing stage at the appropriate time. Yours truly, Johann von Volner. This is child's play. So, let's see what Volner has in his bookcase. Huh, <laughs> not surprising. Most of these works are in German. And one in Latin. Longini Militis Fabulum. Ah, what have we here? It looks like a kind of biography on Longinus the Centurion. Truly, Volner has done everything he can to get information about that lance. Mm, I'd better keep this one, though. Dirty shit. Damn, that's all I need. Maybe he knows something about the lance. What are you doing in my room? Sir, perfect timing. I, I was looking for you. You were looking for me? Well, here I am. What can I do for you? I was wondering if you might help me. You're the one looking for the lance. No, Don't I... take me for a fool. You are looking for the holy lances. What's the matter? You seem completely panicked at the idea I might be interested in this relic. I... No, no, that's not true. What are you so afraid of? I'm not afraid. You know Mortimer's got it. 
So you're not worried that I'd give it back to him? What is it? So you? why are you so terrified of me being able to find it? You have no idea what it is you're looking for. What are you playing at, Richet? Mortimer's the one who has that cursed lot. How long have you been looking for it? Ah, I see. You want it, and so you plan to steal it from Mortimer. For a long time. Isn't that right? Why, you little swine! You're planning to give it to Sir Gregory. You're looking to double-cross me and Piaggi too. What on earth is he talking about? Mr. Von Volner, would you be so kind as to calm yourself down, please? All I'm trying to do is make amends for his eminence's errors. Sir Gregory should surround himself with better people, if you want my opinion, but Piaggi is a friend of my mother's. What? I... You want to help, Piaggi? I just told you, that's what my mother would do if she was here. I heard you in the corridor, and he seemed to be in serious trouble because of the lances. I'm only trying to help him. Ah. All right, Louis. I thought you were trying to manipulate me. But please, uh, excuse me. I got a little bit uh, carried away. But you can't get ahead by staying in the shadows on a case like this. There are already several of us searching for the Lance of Longinus, and it would be smarter to pool our information. Unfortunately, I've barely made any progress. I'm still trying to find out what the original Lance really looked like. Ah, let me reassure you, we've all been there, given the number of copies there are in existence. It also took us quite some time to discover its true shape. Many believe the central part of the head of the lance to be covered in gold. Whereas, in truth, its center is made of an alloy of copper and iron. That does make sense. In those times, a centurion wouldn't have any chance of possessing a lance made of gold. Ah, that is the perversion of Christian idolatry. A copper lance could not have been noble enough to pierce the sight of Christ. Anyway, Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Louis. But keep me posted as to your research. We're bound to end up recovering it. I'm counting on it. See you later. I managed to get the biography of Longinus' Centurion. Let's see what it can teach me. Hmm. An interesting passage here tells me that the lance is engraved with the symbol of the first Christians. The fish. The Bible must mean the lance which finally took the life of Christ. The Gospel of St. John is the most detailed on the subject of the crucifixion. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. 
but one of the soldiers with a shimmering lance pierced his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water, and he that saw it bore witness. And his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. A shimmering lance? What is this telling me? The medieval hermetic traditions evoked the idea of using noble materials for relics, which the monasteries often made themselves in order to attract pilgrims. Of course, they had to inspire greatness. So here, we might think of gold, whereas a centurion could not have hoped for anything better than copper at the time. The true lance would not have been a luxurious weapon. The name of the Roman soldier who killed Christ never appears in the biblical canon. Yet, it is said that he was a centurion and was called Longinus. The Bible must mean the lance which finally took the life of Christ. The four Gospels each give an account of the death of Christ. Let's see what they can tell me about the lance. There's nothing about the lance in this account of the crucifixion. This apostle does not mention the lance in his description of the death of Christ. There's no mention of the lance in what Luke says about the death of Christ. Ah, there! When they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a shimmering lance pierced his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water. And he that saw it bore witness, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. A shimmering lance? What is this telling me? This sarcophagus is engraved with the name of Clemens III. Good God! The one whose cross allowed me to enter. That was the Pope from the Middle Ages who inspired the Third Crusade. He gave the Roman people the power to elect their magistrates. This sarcophagus is beautifully made, but ancient. Stone is marked by the passage of time, but it's really well preserved. He was basically an anti-pope. His path to the throne was pretty turbulent, and he had to be enthroned several times. The result of a long conflict between the papacy and the Holy Empire. Clemens III, Clément III in French. How come his tomb ended up here and not in the Vatican? This one has no name. I wonder who it was for. I can see that this spear has a a so-called leaf shape. It is copper rimmed.
I can see the tip is engraved with the symbol of the Eye of Ra. Here we can see this lance has a leaf shape, is gold rimmed, and a fish is engraved on the tip. Flavius Aetius. It was cut a long time ago. You could tell by the rough hacks of the tool and the patina of the stone. This sarcophagus is very ancient. I'd say it's several centuries old. I remember, he was the Roman general who defeated Attila and his hordes in the terrible battle of the Catalonian plains. Flavius Aetius, the one they call the last of the Romans. He was assassinated by his own emperor, who was jealous of all his victories. But how did he end up here? Flavius Aetius. Flavius Aetius, the one they call the last of the Romans. He was assassinated by his own emperor, who was jealous of all his victories. But how did he end up here? We can see that this lance has a leaf shape, and well, it's in gold. I can see that a crucifix is engraved on the tip, just barely visible. Let's take a look at this lance here. It has a very special leaf shape. It is copper rimmed and I can see a fish symbol engraved on the tip. Let's take a look at this lance here. It has a very special leaf shape. It is copper rimmed and I can see a fish symbol engraved on the tip. I can see that this lance has the shape of a boar spear. The blade is partially coated in copper, and I can just make out the symbol of the Eye of Ra engraved on the tip. I can see this lance has a spear shape. It is copper rimmed and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. I can see this lance has a spear shape. It is copper rimmed, and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. This lance has a leaf shape. It is copper rimmed. The symbol of the Christian fish is engraved on the tip. The 
this lance has a leaf shape. It is copper rimmed. The symbol of the Christian fish is engraved on the tip. sarcophagus of Lord Mortimer. Let's see what we can find here. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. Let's see what we can find here. Ha! Great! Now let's see what's inside. 